Thanks, Vicky. In many Tasmanian country towns in the 20th century, there was a photographer who recorded its characters, its social life and its public events. Unfortunately, the survival of their original images in many cases has been a matter of chance rather than design. And this was brought home to me recently when uh, I was talking to a member of the West Tamar Historical Society who mentioned how, they, how the society had come by a large collection of glass plate negatives of the Beaconsfield area. And this happened because a member of the society was presented with a very decrepit looking box of glass plate negatives with the instruction that they might be useful for building a greenhouse. <laughs> The presenter of these plates had no interest in their subject matter or perhaps was not even aware that uh, the plates carried photographic images. Now, happily, Jackie Robinson, Waratah photographer, has fared much better than that. As, we, as uh, Vicky and, and Bill have just alluded, there are thousands of glass plate negatives that have been preserved by his family and by acquisition by the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery. Perhaps as many where at least hundreds survive as postcards and prints in various museums and in private collections. I have interviewed many elderly former Waratah residents and half the photos they show me of yesteryear in Waratah from their own collections, whether they be portraits or landscapes, are Robinson photos. Sometimes the only photos they have of their forebears are very professional looking Robinson portraits featuring what appear to have been Robinson's only studio backdrop, and you'll see this if you, if you have a look at the, at the, at the exhibition. And those of a sun, sun streaming across a rickety garden fence, and the backdrop itself, uh, if you look at enough photos, comes really starts to look pretty rickety itself, <laughs> after a lot of use. Often the holders of the Robinson photos have no idea who shot them. The photos have come to represent bygone days in Waratah, and they, they now belong to anyone who experienced those days. I guess it's a, a compliment to the photographer when this sort of community ownership of images takes place. Perhaps the real test of amateur country photographers like Robinson is the number of family albums their images are preserved in. You could illustrate a primer on 20th century mining technology with Robinson photos. And you could almost compose a photographic history of the Mount Bischoff mine or of the, the West Coast Oz Meridian fields using those photos. Robinson was there when the Governor called or when the Premier called on Waratah. He was there when a Tasmanian mining frontier, Savage River, had big New York fountain pen manufacturers at its beck and call. He was there when Hollywood came calling in the form of the movie Jeweled Nights being shot on the Savage River Osmeridium field. But he was also there to capture ordinary people living everyday lives. You get a real taste of the joys and hardships of a West Coast community. What you don't get in a photographer like Sperling or Beatty, but you do get in a small town amateur like Robinson, is that everyday sp spontaneity of the bread van of the bread, sorry, being delivered in a wheelbarrow because the van broke down, of the Emi Bay Railway locomotive submerged in snow, isolating the town, or of a, of a children's fancy dress party. There are plenty of picnics in his photos with uh, lush rainforest settings. There are big fish that didn't get away, weddings, returned soldiers, hockey teams, wood shops, World War I and World War II victory celebrations, panoramas of immense crowds gathered for anniversary celebrations, or at the Druids' Ball in the Athenaeum Hall, which was Waratah's community hub. Unfortunately, in these, in these crowd shots, often we can't identify the people, and I find it quite confronting to look into the eyes of so many individuals in these very sharp, very detailed images of crowds and wonder about the life of each of them, who they were and what they did, all of them now anonymous. It's a great shame that, that Nancy, Jackie Robinson's daughter, is not here at this opening. She unfortunately passed away a few months ago. Nancy would have been able to speak much more richly about her father, obviously, and about old Waratah than I can. It's great though to have uh, Robinson descendants here, 
tonight, and also to have some, some present day Waratah people, and uh, I think we've got some from Corinna as well. And these, these people are a reminder that Waratah has a present and a future, as well as a past. Present day Waratah has less than 300 people, compared to about 1500 at its prime, shortly before Jackie Robinson arrived there in 1913. <coughs> but this town, which is the cradle of Tasmanian mining, is experiencing another of those upswing cycles characteristic of mining towns. The mine that, that its discoverer, Philosopher Smith, believed would be worked for centuries, has now been worked in three different centuries. It is the nature of mining to dig away the evidence of previous mining operations and the lower diggings of the Mount Bischoff mine, which can be seen in several pictures in this exhibition, are now gone, like the people who work them and the families of those people, of those workers. Part of the main tunnel, which is also depicted in, in the exhibition, has disappeared into the new 600 metre by 300 metre open cut. What I hope, hope remains, though, and what I hope Robinson photos given us more publicity or help preserve is a sense of pride in Waratah, not only about its, its great significance in Tasmanian history, but in the extraordinary people who forged a future in the Highlands. This exhibition really celebrates them, and on that note it gives me great pleasure to declare open the exhibition, Mining Mud and Mirth, Robinson's Photographs of Waratah, 1913 to 45.